Hi and welcome to the fourth episode of Lou's Makes. My name is Lou and on here I talk about everything that I am making, fiber arts related and that is mostly knitting but we also have some crocheting in this episode. So this episode kind of has a theme of letting go of things, stashing down, clearing my needles and getting ready for spring. I'm so looking forward to nicer weather and different kind of makes, like working with different kinds of fibers, doing different kinds of designs. And I have like picked out some inspirational patterns, things that I am very like interested in. I've been doing lots of revelry revelry scrolling. I'm not a native English speaker so this word kind of like is really hard for me sometimes. <laughs> revelry, yeah. I've been doing lots of revelry scrolling, that's what I wanted to say, so I can show you the things that I'm thinking about making. You can get some inspiration from that and yeah, let's just start. I think I'm in a good mood today. I'm kind of rambly. I'm kind of like wiggling around a lot. <laughs> but yeah, that's nice. I've been getting in a workout this morning. So that always like energizes me and puts me in a good mood. Also, we've been rearranging our apartment just a little bit more. I've been talking about this, I think. Um, if you have watched the first episode, you would have noticed that I'm filming in a different spot for the later episodes. Later episodes, as if I've had so many more episodes since then. But anyways, you understand what I mean. And uh, yeah, we've been, like we, my partner and I, we've been going like to Ikea and thinking about different furniture items that we might want to swap out. We have um, switched around the functionalities of our rooms. So we switched our bedroom with our working space and now we need to reorganize this working space. We've got some new bedding. I think this looks kind of nice in the background of this video. I've put a new plant in my filming space. Also something very exciting, uh, my partner and I, we are getting married um, late spring. So we've been doing some paperwork administrational things and I hope everything will just go through and we won't have to bother with that anymore. <laughs> I'd like to get married, of course, but all of this administrational stuff, I'm just happy when it's over. <laughs> Also, we do have some visitors this episode. Um, my cats are gonna be running around in the background because my partner is not here today. And if I would be closing the door to this room, um, the cats just wouldn't be happy and wouldn't leave me alone. So I think I'm better off like that. Let's see if I get distracted very much. They like to mess with my yarn. If you do any kind of fiber art and have animals, I think, I think you know what I mean. Before I ramble on for too long, I think we will just start with what I've been doing crafts related. So I already told you that I let go of some things and uh, going back to the first episode, I think that's the only episode I talked about this project. I rocked my tessellated socks by Andrea Mari. Um, these socks were on my needles for like two or three months at this point. And when I say socks, I only mean one sock. <laughs> I never even finished the first sock. And I noticed... Uh, so my cat wants to go into the bed sheets. Luna, my already destroying the new bedding. Thank you. Thank you, Luna. What did I want to say? The tessellated socks by Andrea Murray. Yeah. So I really like the design. I would have liked to have the finished socks and I don't want to say like anything remotely bad about this pattern. It's, it's just something that wasn't for me in the long run. And yeah, when I work on a project for like three months, or rather I am not working on a project, but it's 
like stuck on my needles, I will just decide to let it go. Um, I wanted to chat a little bit about the reasoning behind that. Um, because like I said, the pattern is great. The finished object looks very cute. I would like to have them, um, but knitting is just not for me. So with these socks, it was the first time that I tried out um, tiny circular needles, but these are just super, super tiny circular needles with the shortest little needle tips imaginable. And they just gave me a lot of trouble. I was finding my hands cramping a lot, especially like my right hand, the active working hand, I guess. And I've also, after frogging this project, tried out working with these needles once more to figure out if it was the needles or the stitch pattern. And yeah, it's, it's the needles. And I think I will be switching back to the magic loop method of knitting socks. Talking about the stitch pattern, you are doing these socks with mosaic knitting, which was the first time I did that with this pattern. It's very, very easy. And mosaic knitting just means that you are holding only one yarn for each row and are slipping the second color. So yeah, it's kind of color work, but with just holding one strand of yarn. So it's very easy and you don't have to switch around the yarns and stuff. And uh, that means the fabric is kind of growing very slowly because of these slipped stitches. It seems like you're working each row at least two times. And also I figured out that I don't like working with one strand of mohair or like a silky lace weight yarn. It just hurts my hands a little bit and I feel like I'm ripping it and I'm kind of getting anxious when working like that. So I frogged this project, the yarn I could save, um, I put back into stash and I'm going to make another sock another time. Looking at my projects and figuring out on which projects I wanted to work on, I also looked at my stash um, in the same manner. And talking about stash, I can show you how I store all of my yarn. So this is the basket I am using. And yeah, that is all of my yarn. I like to be very minimal, I guess. Also talking about my stash and stuff, I want to say like you gotta do you. If you do want to have lots of yarn and have a huge stash, a whole room of yarn, please, please do that. Do what makes you happy. I just noticed with myself that I get stressed out if I have a lot of yarn and not like specific plants attached to the yarn or paired with the yarn. So I looked at all of my yarns. These are like my yarns de-stashed. You can see, ah, this is the sock yarn I used before <laughs> for the tessellated socks. Um, yeah, you can see I have lots of like frogged yarn that is hand wound and that I do have plans on working into another garment. And then I do have some like quantities that um, will be worked out soon as well. And yeah, this is my yarn stash without the yarn that I de-stashed. I'm going to show you this yarn as well. So this is the yarn I'm going to let go off. And I just uh, yeah looked at all of the quantities I had, thought about which projects I wanted to make with them and what were the yarns that I was just not looking forward to working with or I hadn't had a specific project in mind. And for like my own planning reasons, I just want to let go of them. So this is a mystery yarn, I'm calling it, because this is a yarn that I bought maybe like a whole year ago when I just started out with knitting. I think I've been knitting for like one and a half to two years about about that time frame and I've thrown away like the band from the yarn so I don't know what this is. I tried googling it but I couldn't find anything about that. It's like a 100% DK weight cotton yarn with tweedy bits and I think this is just too warm toned for me, for my skin. Um, I don't really like wearing beiges or browns. 
like a cool top brown might work for me but yeah i just prefer wearing cooler tones i've worked this yarn up once before i will put in a picture of the project that i had worked it in and uh, worked it up in <laughs> and that was a t-shirt um, the perfect knit tee or shirt or whatever i will write it down um, by caitlin barthold of originally lovely i like the pattern i like the design i would recommend knitting this it's a free pattern as well but i did choose a dk weight 100 percent cotton and I found myself not wearing this shirt, so I frocked it and um, never worked with it again. And I just don't see myself working with this, so I will let go of it. Another yarn quantity, this looks quite funny because this has been frocked as well. Um, this is Drops Wish, held together with the Drops Kid Silk Mohair. I will also put in a picture what this yarn was um, previously worked in up up in okay i i just gotta stop with this <laughs> i will put in a picture of what this yarn has been before it's not getting any better well you know what i mean you're, you're gonna see a picture and what i've realized with this um firstly i rocked this project because i just didn't really like it I don't like super chunky, clunky, bulky yarn. I think, okay, hello. <laughs> I just think the fabric is not my preferred fabric. You do you, if you like bulky yarn, please knit with it, make beautiful chunky sweaters. But I don't find myself wearing these garments and I like a more like clean look, I guess. Um, also working with huge needles, it hurts my hands a lot. I just don't like it. I have realized I am a DK to fingering weight kind of girl. <laughs> I I just like to work with 3.5, three millimeter or four millimeter needles. This is yeah my preferred needle size. The needle size isn't for me, so I don't see myself working this yarn up another time um also i don't really like the texture of this yarn specifically um i think i'm not like educated enough to tell you how this yarn has been made it's not a blown yarn is it plied i don't know it's just one strand of fluffiness and i think it looks kind of messy made up in a garment so these are the two yarn quantities I'm getting rid of and what I mean by that I will ask the people in my life who have something to do with yarn if they want that. I have a friend who crochets, my mother-in-law knits, um, my mom also crochets and knits so maybe they want to have one or two of these yarns and if not I think I will just give them away. I also wanted to chat a little bit about why I like to have a minimal stash, like that's what I'm calling it. I don't have any plans of knitting up everything, like at least not for right now. I just like to have fewer yarns and fewer projects ahead so that I have like the freedom of choosing a new yarn in the future whenever I get inspired to put in a new project into my queue. I just find that this is the least stressful way for me and also doing it this way I kind of make sure that I'm always choosing the yarn that I like best at that moment in time because I always learn something new about the fiber contents I like, the yarn weights and I always be excited about going to the yarn store and choosing something very specific and I can just like get the yarn and work it up in a relatively close time frame, which I personally prefer. Just to reiterate, if you do like to have a big stash, please continue with that. Everybody just has to do what's best for them and what feels the most like them. And I'm just somebody who likes to be very organized and document everything. Um, that doesn't mean that I'm the most organized person like in every aspect of my, like, uh, of my life, I do think that I'm 
kind of like living in a creative mess from time to time. I am more like that. But if I do love a craft and I'm very passionate about something, I will usually be very like organized and tidy with those things. Yeah. Before we start with the finished objects, I do want to talk about one other thing, and that is my Moss Rose hoodie, my pattern that I um, published on Revelry, which is this one. I still have water in this, so it might make some sounds. Um, yeah, I'm still really, really proud of this design. I have uploaded it on Revelry um, like one and a half weeks ago. And I'm like so excited about how many people have looked at it and favorited it. I just wanted to say thank you again. And if you haven't seen this uh, pattern, you can just go to the link in my description box. This is a free pattern on Ravelry. You can just grab it and make yourself a hot water bottle cover with some leftover yarn, some DK weight. This works out quite fast, I feel like, and it's a fun texture pattern. Now we're going into the finished objects and I'm happy to announce this one as a finished object. Oh, this is quite big after washing now. Uh-huh. So, this Oh, <laughs> this is the Gallen Tank by Isolde Teak. This is a yeah, slouchy, oversized, drop shoulder vest. The original pattern calls for a plant fiber, so it's more like a summer top. But I have chosen a merino, the Drops Extra Fine merino, um, to make this into a more like transitional piece. This is a gift knit for my mom's birthday. Her birthday is in March and I'm really, really happy to have finished this vest so soon so I don't get into any kind of time crunch with that. I think I have shown this vest quite a lot, but just to give a little overview, it does have a v-neck um, that I bound off with a tubular, not tubular, Italian bind off and it does have like a slip stitch, central stitch in the middle, which looks quite nice. I have also put in a row of um, crocheted slip stitches just around the neck to make it a little bit more tidy. Um, the back also has an interesting like trapezoid shaping with lifted increases. Then there are some um, ripped cuffs and on the bottom of the vest we have a um, split in the hem, a split hem, which is quite nice. The only things I had left to do was to sew in the ends and wash and block it. That's what I've done. So I will probably take some pictures with that <laughs> just for fun and then wrap it all up and gift it to my mom. I really like working with this pattern. I've talked about this um, for like almost every episode, I think. Um, so if you have been watching, you know all of this. I just want to give a very quick overview um, what I've thought about the pattern. So you can knit it in the round as well as flat, which I think is great for like everybody and how they have learned to knit. There's also a great size range and you can choose um, from four different bust shaping options. So everybody will hopefully make themselves the most best fitting vest. Um, something that I've noticed with washing the vest is that the yarn bled quite a lot. So I used the Drops Extra Fine Merino in the color Verde, um, which is a yeah, super wash yarn that you can also toss in the washing machine, I think up to 30 degrees. And uh, I just hand washed it in my sink and noticed the yarn just bleeding a lot. The water was turning quite green. So if you would be to wash this in the washing machine, I would be very, very careful and maybe wash this one or two times just on its own before washing it with other items to not get the color like on those other pieces of clothing. That's that. 
I don't think we will seeing this vest again on here. I will package this up and gift it to her in like two weeks time. Another rather quick thing I did was to go back to my Marseille sweater by Petite Knit that I made um, in December, I think. I will just quickly show it off. So this is my Marseille sweater. I made it with Drops Nepal and the Schaffenmeyer Merino for the, uh, for the stripes. And I've also held a color changing mohair with the stripes to get a interesting color changing effect. I really, really like the sweater, but I noticed that I didn't grab for it as much because of one specific thing, and that was the neckline. I didn't really like everything that I would be wearing underneath showing and that's why I reworked the um, neck ribbing. And before I talk about that much further, I will just put in some clips. I filmed the whole process and I think Voice Over Lou will tell you more about that. So this was the before of the sweater. I just wasn't happy with the tallness of the collar. I just wanted it a little bit higher on my neck. So I had to gather all of my materials and set up a video to watch while doing it. And I began with unraveling the edge that was knitted together. Here was the double knitting, which is the fold of the collar. I think I just stole this uh, design of the Ingrid sweater I've done previously. And I looked at my Ravelry to figure out which needle size I used. That's why it's very important to document what you do when knitting. After unraveling, I of course had to pick up the stitches, the live stitches, which took quite some time, as you can imagine. This was the yarn that was left over. I was just getting rid of the ramen noodle mess. It was not a lot of yarn and I had some left in stash. Then I put in a stitch marker at like the beginning of round. I just estimated where that would be and I just started knitting in the round and I kind of figured out beforehand how many rows I would have to do so that I would be happy with the tallness of the color afterwards. Here you can see me knitting in real time. I think the whole process took me around like two or three hours, but I think it's totally worth it. If you've put in so many hours into a sweater and you already like it a lot, you should, you should put in the effort. This is how it looked like after binding off. And here you can see the like double knitting and how it's working with the color. And then I proceeded to sew in or like rather crochet the edges together from the neckline to the cast off edge of the collar. All that I had left to do now was to sew in the ends and what I like to do is to let them hang out freely like in the inside of the collar. And this is how the collar is looking like right now. I'm so, so happy with it. It's just exactly how I wanted it to be. And I think this really fits the overall look of this like Erin Wade chunky sweater. So this is my Marseille sweater now. I'm really, really happy to have reworked it a little bit so it's more wearable. That's the beauty of handmade things. You can always go back and pick things. I will be blocking the collar at some point. I haven't um, up until this point, but 
when it gets warmer, I think I will wash all of my wool sweaters and put them away and that way the collar will be washed and blocked as well. Just washing the collar, I don't think it's worth to like put this into, into the tub. <laughs> I'm very very happy and I think I will get some more wears out of this this year until it gets warm. Now to the most exciting FO of this episode of these past two weeks and that is my October sweater by Petite Knit. This has been on my needles for quite a bit and I'm not gonna lie I got a little bit tired of it <laughs> at some point. So like I said this is a design by Petite Knit. It's a oversized raglan construction with a crew neck and it's uh, quite long of a pullover with a split hem on the bottom. You can kind of tell I like a split hem. <laughs> I think it looks nice. I have worked this pullover up with the Loch Lomond lace yarn as well as the Creme de Sol wool baby silk, which is an alpaca and silk yarn. And this made for a kind of marled, um, fluffy fabric. I really like the yarn combination. It's the most fluffy, delicious pullover. I have really learned to love the Loch Lomond yarn with making this project. I do look forward um, to making more things with this yarn. I do have in my head um, the zipper sweater Men Light, Light Men, I don't know um, the order of those words, but like the zipper sweater everybody makes for their partners. Um, my partner said he would like that, so this might be his next like autumn sweater. And I feel like choosing Loch Lomond again for this project and like other sweaters for myself as well. Um, I think it's the perfect amount of rusticness. It's not a super wash, which I don't prefer for myself. I do like something with a little bit of like grip, but I'm also quite a bit sensitive. So yeah, this Loch Lomond yarn is just perfect for that. It's like a rustic, non-scratchy yarn, at least for my skin. With the alpaca yarn, I kind of have learned, like people tell you that alpaca is a good alternative um, compared to mohair, if you find mohair scratchy, but I have like learned, I think they mean brushed alpaca, not alpaca like this with this very um, hairy kind of texture. So yeah, this alpaca silk is just a tiny bit scratchy unfortunately, um, but I can tolerate it. I only really like feel it on my like upper chest um, area, but I'm hopeful that this uh, fluffy yarn will kind of fell down a little bit from the inside. I've noticed that with like previous mohair projects and then I think it will be just fine and absolutely wearable. I really, really like this yarn combination and the weight at which I've knitted the sweater. I knitted the sweater up in a different gauge. So the pattern um, calls for a fingering plus like fluffy lace yarn, but I've chosen two lace yarns just because I really wanted to work with this specific shade of the Blomond, which comes in a DK and a lace weight. And I just chose the lace weight. The pattern also says that you uh, we'll be working up the sweater with a 4mm needle. I have sized down to a 3.5mm since I thought the fabric was the nicest this way. And what I've done then is to size up um, for the sweater to make the most perfect size for myself. And I have definitely succeeded with that. Um, you can kind of do a little bit of math with your own gauge swatch to figure out which size would um, suit you with your like specific gauge. And yeah, I'm very, very happy that this worked out. Also, I had like an inspirational pullover, a store-bought pullover that I really, really like and that I wear a lot. Um, specifically because of its silhouette, which is very similar to the October sweater, and that's why I chose this one. I might put in a clip of that as well, comparing these two sweaters to itself, um, and you can see it's like almost spot on. These sweaters almost have like the same width in every part of it. Some modifications that I made 
is that I've knitted um, the body just a little bit longer because I overbought on the yarn like on purpose because I wanted it to be a little bit longer. Um, looking back, I could I could have done a little bit more, but I was like anxious about running out of yarn because you were doing like so much ribbing and I wasn't looking forward to ripping that out if I didn't have enough yarn and I really wanted a ribbing that was this long. Um, so yeah, I do have some left over that you will see in a different project soon. Um, yeah, that's what I did. Also, um, because I looked at project photos of this pattern, um, I have modified the color just a little bit. Um, what I've noticed with these project uh, photos was that I didn't really like how far down the neck came um, with some of them. So to prevent that, I knitted the collar just a little bit taller. I think I knitted it like one and a half times um, as long. My dishwasher said hello. <laughs> hello and welcome. Please chill on the bed. Don't fight. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> so I talked about the color of the sweater. I've knitted it like one and a half times as tall as the pattern said. And what I've also done is to put in a row of slip stitches with a crochet hook. It's just something I like to do here and there because it gives it a... <sighs> now the dishwasher is saying that he's done with doing his job. Thank you. Putting in a row of slip stitches with a crochet hook is just something I like to do here and there because it gives the fabric a little bit more of integrity, less stretch. That's just something you have to keep in mind. So this neck opening is not really stretchy, it's kind of stiff, but it also um, like stays up, up here where I want it to. I think that's everything I had to say about the sweater. If you do have any questions, you can always leave them in the comments. And if you do want to look at my project page, it's um, like my Ravelry is also linked in the description box and you can like check out what I do on there. Like all of the time, I do like to document, as I said before. That's it for the finished objects. Now we are moving into the works in progress. I do have two whips. One is a sweater that I have to say I'm kind of getting tired of as well. And one is a long-term whip, my like scrappy blanket. So let's start with the yoga sweater winter. This will be my last winter pullover and like I said I'm kind of like so looking forward to the spring season that I'm like I want to get this done with. I also want to wear it but like I just want warmer weather. I don't want to wear pullovers anymore. <laughs> I'm done with that. <laughs> but yeah, I gotta finish this. So this is the oh yoga sweater winter or like as far as I've gotten with that already. Um, this is a pattern by Hoke Knits, which is a like another raglan construction with a high like funnel neck, which I have not done before. Um, it also has a slit. Um, who would have thought? I really like splits. I don't know. It's just on theme for me this season. Um, and it has like a really interesting um, split in the hem because you are decreasing on both sides of the sweater, also like the front and the back, and it gives it a interesting kind of shape. I think this will look quite nice um, worn with like a skirt or like long pants um, and they will be peeking out like at the hips. I think this will be a nice silhouette. Um, this I made with the Alva Silk by Schachemeyer. I gotta check. Yeah, that's right. The Schachemeyer Alva Silk yarn, which is a blend of like, I think merino, cotton and silk which I thought was such an interesting combination. Also very non-scratchy, which was very important to me since the funnel neck would be touching all of my neck and I can't tolerate scratchy fibers right there. I've also held some um, brushed alpaca by Chaos with that in a dark blue. 
So the fabric is just slightly marled in a very nice way. I do like the texture of brushed alpaca a lot and I'm looking forward to making more pieces with a brushed alpaca yarn instead of a mohair. I think it's a little bit more like rustic looking, also very like soft and nice. And rather than a halo, it, I don't know, it, it looks like it felts into the yarn it's been worked up with. That's really nice. The Chaos brushed alpaca also doesn't have a silk core, so you're not seeing any of the white silk in there. It's just, it's just nice and fluffy. Yeah. I've had had some issues with this um, pattern. I talked about this in the last episode as well. I do think that the gauge given in the pattern is off in a way that your size will come out a bit smaller, like quite a bit smaller. And that's why I made up my own gauge and I'm working with one size of a needle bigger than like the pattern calls for. Working up the pattern is fun, it's well written. I do think the final sweater will be very nice and handy. I am so content with my choice of fiber. Also, I had to get some more yarn um, because I spontaneously decided to hold the alpaca yarn with it. And like, luckily I had a voucher left over from Christmas so I could get like three more skeins of the alpaca yarn. And now I'm just working along on the sleeves. I just have the sleeves left and then I'm done with that. Also, after finishing the sweater, I will have cleared my needles off of everything and I'm so looking forward to just starting fresh. I sometimes do get like the itch to do that. I don't know, it's like spring cleaning motivation or something like that. <laughs> On to my long-term whip. This is a crochet project and it's the Bettenberg Blanket by Sandra Paul. If she's German, it would be Sandra Paul. <laughs> uh, I don't know. And this is a blanket made up of like lots and lots and lots of little squares. I don't, I don't know if you would call them granny squares. Um, they're not the traditional granny square. They look like um, this. Very, very cute. Uh, I've altered the pattern just a little bit, so I'm working with DK instead of fingering weight yarn and I'm doing four rows around instead of three, so my squares are quite a bit larger and I did that because I just work with more DK weight yarns and um, like if I have some fingering left over I can still just uh, hold them double and get to the same yarn weight. So I will be working all of my yarn scraps into this blanket and what I've thought is that I want to go through all of the squares that I've made up until now and kind of do a little counter each uh, podcast episode. I will have to figure out how many squares I have to make until I can start assembling the blanket. Also, I'm not quite sure if I want to work up half of the blanket with my scraps and then get a main yarn for like the other half of the blanket or if I want to use entirely scraps for that. That's just something I will have to figure out at some point. But right now I'm just like happily working on these little squares. I will also have to figure out how I want to mark my new squares. I think I will just put stitch markers in, in them before putting them in like the tote bag that they are living in. Then I can just show you all of the new squares in each episode. But now let's go through all of the squares that I've done already and count them up. So this is the Merino Worsted of Bolivian Oliver Fibers, which is a hand dyed yarn in the color Macaron. I will certainly forget all of the yarn names and stuff with doing these episodes, but let's see. So I have one, two, three, and four of these. Then I have already worked up the remains of my October sweater into some squares. I do have some yarn left though. So I have um, one, two, and three. So that's seven. Um, I do have to say this yarn is not nice to crochet with. Obviously I'm just gonna crochet like my scraps so there will be like 
differences in crocheteableness. I think a super wash or cotton yarn is the is the way to go. But yeah, I'm just doing I'm just doing what I want. Um, then from my sweater number fourteen V neck, I think um, I do have these squares. Some of them I have held with mohair, some not. I also have some left of some like leftover yarn from this still. So we had seven. So this is eight. 9, 10, 11, and 12. This was the yarn that I have made the Ingrid sweater for my partner with. So we were at 12. This is um, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Also 19. And then I have some um, merino that I've made a muscle burrow head for my partner with. We were at 19, so this is 20 and 21. These are all the squares I have until now. I do have some more yarn to work with and there will be coming um, yarn into, into like this bag to crochet with. And uh, yeah, the total count is 21. We'll see how many more squares I have made um, up until the next episode. If I don't work on them, I won't put like this section into my podcast episode. And this was just something I thought would be a fun thing to do on here. I hope you're excited. It will definitely keep me motivated to make more of these squares. Also, it's really, really fun to um, crochet with the yarn that you have previously knitted before. It just is something different for the hands. Also, if I have like um, motivation to do something in the evening, I can just grab like a ball of yarn out of my little baggie. And in like 20 minutes time, I can make one little square and uh, will have made a little bit of progress and have scratched the itch for like making something. <laughs> something else I wanted to share about this project is that I thought about the ends because this is not something I would be looking forward to, to weave all of these in. And what I've thought to do is that I want to like, of course, assemble the blanket um, so that the ends will be on the wrong side of the blanket or just like on one side of it. And then I want to sew a big piece of fabric onto the wrong side of the crocheted fabric. So all of the ends can be on the inside. I don't have to mess with them. Like I've knotted them one time and I am just gonna be let them hang out in the inside kind of of the blanket. And I think that would be a very secure way for none of the squares coming apart. Also a lazy way to not have to sew in all of the ends. So yeah, that's just what I'm thinking about. Also with my um, color palette right now, if I would be to make this blanket with a main yarn, I think I would get a like tweedy, speckly, colorful yarn, maybe like with a gray base. That's what I'm thinking to like go with the colorfulness of the blanket. Also because I will be having some very light yarns. So I think a white for a main color wouldn't work out that nice. And that's that for my Battenberg blanket. Now onto my future plans. Because I already told you, I'm so eager for new projects and I'm really like in a planning and scrolling kind of phase. The next thing that I already have yarn for would be the Sporty Knit Squirt by Florence Miller or Handmade by Florence on YouTube. I have wanted to have this finished project for a long, long time now. So yeah, it's finally time to cast it on after finishing my yoga sweater because I won't finish that if I cast on a new project right now. Yeah. So the yarn that I want to use is a Reggie yarn six ply which is a sock yarn here you can see a little gauge swatch 
and I needed the needle for something else so this is just hanging out like that but this is the yarn um, this is a DK weight sock yarn with some polyamide and um, just normal like sheep's wool I've chosen that to give my skirt a little bit more durability since I'm just a tiny bit anxious about putting something knitted on the bottom of my body and like of course like sitting on the garment <laughs> and stuff like that. The sporty knit skirt is like a normal skirt of course and I think you pick up um, underneath and knit a shorts um, afterwards. So I think this will be such a nice staple. Um, I've never made something for the bottom half of my body so I'm looking forward to that and it will go nicely with lots of my wardrobe I guess. That's like the next plan on my queue that I really want to do. Um, yeah. Another thing I want to cast on soon, maybe together with the with the skirt, I do like to have like two projects that I can kind of switch between. Although both of these projects would be like three millimeter or three and a half millimeter ripped projects. So I will see if I need to have a little bit more like difference between them. Um, but what I wanted to say is that I want to use a stash yarn that I've showed in the last episode as well. This is a, um, I think also a Regia cashmere and wool yarn. This has a slight um, percentage of cashmere in it as well as like nylon and wool and would make for a really nice um, ribbed close to skin top, which I want to make with it. I want to make the square neck camisole by Helene Bieber, I think is the designer's name. In the last episode, I thought about um, making this top, no, making this yarn into the um, twist loop top by other loops, but I've looked through the project photos um, because I was kind of thinking about the bra straps showing um, and that's what people wrote about in the projects as well. So I think I would just go with the square neck cami um, since this will be a very non-fussy top that I can just wear every day also to the office and uh, feel covered and content with. <laughs> also one thing I really really want to do is a lace sock. Um, I think I have knit lace before just in like forms of doing eyelets or something like that, just like very easy yarn overs and knit, knit two togethers and yeah, I just really want to make a lace sock with a fingering yarn. I do want to get some superwash yarn, um, some hand dyed. It would be really, really nice. So this might be like a fun day or a fun activity for a spring day to go out to a yarn shop and pick like one nice sock yarn and work up into a very pretty lace sock. I've done some scrolling. There's like the ladybug. Can you not lick the ladybug? Can you see it? <laughs> I'm gonna... I think I'm gonna save it and put it on the balcony. <laughs> One second. What I wanted to do is show you the lace sock patterns I looked at because there are just so many nice ones. Editing do will love me afterwards because I will be putting in like some pictures in here. <laughs> So I think the socks that I am going to make are the Mercury socks. These are by the designer Kim Droter and it's a free pattern on Ravelry. I have like tried knitting this pattern before um, with a different sock yarn, which wasn't like speaking to me because like it's the sock yarn I wanted to use for the tessellated socks. Um, this one, this is just a little bit too dark for the lace to show up very nicely or in a way that I would prefer. So I want to get some new yarn for that. Um, yeah, I think these are just pretty and easy socks. Also free, so you can just look at the pattern and um, see for yourself if that's something you want to work with. Something um, quite similar are the Cozy Autumn Socks by This Handmade Life. Also a free pattern which I considered 
I'm also really interested in the Petal Drop Socks by Florence Miller. Um, these are like so, so cute. Also in this white color, just amazing. Speaking of Florence Miller, I also like the Mountain Walk Socks. I think there's also a chunky version of them. These are like all the lace patterns I had looked at, but there were some like color work patterns that piqued my interest as well. I think for a spring sock, you might get away with some color work socks. I don't know if I can say that name. I will, um, of course, write it down on screen. It's the Forget Me Gay by Maya Carlson. <laughs> I think um, this is like the Forget Me Not plant in a different language I can't speak. And these are so super cute. Oh, this is such a nice color work pattern and I would love to have these socks. Then I've also um, picked out the Luma socks by Sari Nordlund. Something that has been in my favorites for a long, long time is the Luma sweater, which is so pretty. I really want to make this maybe next winter. But there's also a sock version of them. I think this is so stunning with the two colors of color work, all of the details. This would be such a cute um, spring sock. Then something else I'm so excited for is the Tiptoe Through the Tulips socks by Stonenitz. Like, I can't really put in words like how cute I think they are. <laughs> These are so, so freaking cute. Um, also, the options of doing different kinds of tulips, all of the colors. Um, yeah, one downside about keeping a minimal stash is that I don't have so many like different leftovers. So I wouldn't be able to put in like any leftover fingering sock yarn for my tulips. But if you do have a larger stash, also a larger like fingering weight sock stash, um, this would be an amazing pattern to um, put in many colorful little tulips. Maybe you could get away with purchasing like a little set of minis or like one skein of sock yarn and also like two minis and make a beautiful floral sock. Oh, I also forgot two other lace socks that I've picked out and these are the Oolong socks by Amy Cher. These are so cute. Also, I'm very much into like boba and like milk teas. So that's fitting. <laughs> she also does have some boba socks. I think that's what they are called. Like, that's so cute. I can't. <laughs> and another pattern um, I pinned or favorited are the Queen Anne socks, also by Amy Cher. So maybe next episode I will show you some acquired sock yarn. I think I can do that. I think that's okay. I think that's in my budget. <laughs> Another thing I've been um, scrolling about was the spring cardigan I told you about in the last episode as well. It's just something I would really, really like. In my wardrobe, I do like to wear like um, blouses and summery dresses and cute feminine stuff like that in the spring and summer season. And what I think pairs really nicely with that are or is a lightweight plant fibery cardigan. So something I considered is the Cardi Jumper by Ines Oliveira, but I've also looked at different cardigans. So there are also two other cardigan designs that I thought were really, really nice. One is the Bogota, Bogota cardigan um, by Le Style Knitting. This is also a, this is a fingering weight cardigan made with 3.5, 3 and 4 millimeter needles. And it does have a really nice like lace panel um, from like under under the chest up until the end of the cardigan. And there are also like some tiny lace sleeves. Um, I think a modification you could do with that is to pick up for the arms and knit the arms for it a bit and then do the lace border for the sleeves a little bit lower lower down um, for like a three quarter length or like full sleeve length. But this would be an interesting modification in terms of like decreasing down the sleeve and then still fitting in the lace motif 
um, to the stitches that you would be having left at the end of decreasing. Yeah, that's that would be an interesting challenge, but just in itself, this cardigan or like this cardigan or cardigan style top is really really cute, and I wanted to put it um, here into the podcast. And then there is the Lou cardigan. Haha, <laughs> funny. <laughs> um, this is a cardigan by Sumin Kim um, or Nitz pour moi. Nitz pour moi, yeah. For this cardigan, you're holding two light fingering weights together. So you're at a fingering to sport weight um, gauge and it's knit with 3.5 and 2.5 millimeters. And it just has a very slight um, lace motif. It kind of looks like um, like clover or little flowers and it's just a simple cute cardigan with a round neck and I think you're working um, I-cord edges as well as some like double knitted bands um, in the center of the cardigan. I think it's really really cute. So I might be thinking a little bit more about what cardigan I want to make. I do know that I want to use the Charlemagne Alva Silk again in the light color. I think they have an undyed or... I think they have a color that is called linen, which I really like. That is what my brain is thinking about, what I'm obsessing about at the moment. <laughs> I've shared some further spring knitting plans in my last episode, so I won't repeat any more of that. Um, yeah, I hope I could give you some inspiration and some motivation. Um, for the coming months. I think I will be tidying up my room now and um, eat some lunch. I do these podcasts every two weeks and most of the times they're not as all over the place as this episode has been. <laughs> if you like what I do, you can check out my Instagram. I post there, not daily, but like some updates here and there and I share some photos. Also consider subscribing if you did like this video so YouTube will show you my next one as well. And yeah, I hope to see you then and take care. Bye bye!